What is up my friends, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the cello section of the orchestra. One of my absolute favorites because it has such a resonant and open sound and you probably are familiar with the cello if you've heard really any classical music or film music at all. Um, you've probably heard the cello in some form or shape. Uh, before we get into an overview of the cello, I want to give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. It's totally free and it goes over 10 essential tips that you need to know in order to make your music sound as clear and resonant as possible. Um, you know, if you don't understand these things, it's very easy to make them sound a little amateur, maybe boxy and unbalanced. So understanding concepts like mixing and, and uh, balance and things like that, they're all included in this guide and we'll flesh it out step by step. So feel free to download it. It's, it's totally free. Uh, click the first link below and you'll have access to that right away. So let's talk about the cello for a second. The open strings here are an octave lower or the, the range starts an octave lower than the violas. So we have C1, G1, D2, and A2. Notice how they're stepping up in fifths, perfect fifths. The overall sound is mellower and warmer than the viola and violin, especially in the low registers, it can really sing out there. I think it's a very creamy and rich sound. But at the same time, there's a very bright, open lyrical sound in the higher registers, hence why they're used very often in lead melody functions. Generally, it's more powerful and robust than the violins and violas, right? So there's less players needed for a full sound, and this is even more true for the double basses, which we'll get to very shortly. Um, generally, the cello will assume the role of the tenor and the high bass in terms of the voices. So these are upper male voices, the tenor and the bass, or baritone, you could say. In terms of, of practical function, we like to use them for accompaniment patterns, ossinati, counterpoint, pads, etc. Lots of different functions you can use, kind of like the other strings we talked about, but this is also very important as well. Let's talk about some pros and cons to using the cello. Number one, their beautiful warm sound enables them to blend into the background easily as well as projecting into the spotlight, right? So, you know, you hear string pads all the time creating a foundational bed for the arrangement. Lots of the time, um, celli are part of this arrangement. But when you bring them to the fore and have them play soaring melodies, their dynamic range allows them to really take that spotlight and bring the music forward. So that's um, that just proves the versatility of the cello section. Now, as a solo instrument, the sound and the warmth from the instrument is just incredible. So I wrote the swan here. This is a piece of music you can listen to right now. Listen to the beauty of the of the cello there. And um, it's, it's always a piece that just blows me away. I, I love it so much. Um, listen to, in terms of like performers, the top two that come to mind are Tina Guo and Yo-Yo Ma. Just listen to some of their performances and you'll hear how how romantically, like how beautifully they play that music and express that passion inside every single note. Um, Celli can also cover uh, low and high very well. So there's, I wouldn't say there's a part in the register where it sounds weak, like where the sound doesn't project as well, it doesn't sound as good. I think in the lows and the highs, it's a very versatile instrument that way. And it also lends a very warm sound for chordal purposes. We talked about pads. Um, you know, Celli can perform these sustained chords very, very well. In terms of cons, I can't think of any because I literally just think it's the most versatile string instrument we have. In terms of the range, it has lows and highs. It has a very warm and rich sound. Just, it, it does everything that I would want a, a string instrument to do. Now, what are my favorite ways to use the Celli personally? I love to use them to perform lead melodies as a section or as a solo. I also use them to outline harmonic foundations of a piece, sometimes doubled with basses, but even if the double basses aren't there, I'll still use the cello to play the harmonic foundation instead. So maybe I'll have the cello playing the, the bass notes, maybe I'll use the violas split into VC to play the inner notes, use violins 2 to support violins 1, and then violins 1 play, performing the lead melody on top. Just a very standard arrangement there. Also, I like to use the cello to play accompaniment patterns like pits and shorts to establish the mood of the piece. That's also very common for me as well. And finally, I like to use the cello as a doubler with horns, bassoons, and tuba because they kind of have similar timbres there as well, right? Like the strings have a, have that bowie sound, right, with the strings, but the horns, bassoons, and tuba, these are all using our mouth and using the air. So that produces a, produces a different timbre compared to the cello. So combining them together creates the secondary texture that is really just beautiful and you can take advantage of that in your mock-ups. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to use the celli um, and like my personal uses for them. If you have any thoughts on how you like to use them, please let me know in a comment below. What are your favorite ways to use the celli section? 
uh, or maybe you don't like them as much. So let me know why you don't like them either, but I'd love to know. And before you go, I want to give you the, again, the free guide called 10 Steps to a Clear Orchestral Sound. If you know these 10 things and grasp them and really internalize them, then I can guarantee you that your mockups will just leap forward a step there. And uh, it, it's very important to nowadays more than ever have our mockups sounding good. So I think this guide will help you absolutely. It's it's a totally valuable guide that a lot of my students have said has really helped them with their productions. So again, it's totally free. If you want to check out the first thing in the box below, it'll take you straight there. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll catch you in tomorrow's video and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.